Hi, this video is going to try and debunk some of the claims made by anti-evolutionists online. Now I'm going to use as a template um, someone I've debated and that's the Muslim apologist Adam Dean. And the reason for that is um, he's quite eloquent but also his arguments I think are very representative of many of the anti-evolution uh, websites that you can find quite easily. So before we look at his article in detail it's important to understand what evolution says about human origins. It doesn't say that humans are descended from chimps or monkeys, but that humans and chimps are descended from a common ancestor that probably was neither human nor chimp. We can see this in the graphic uh, from Nature. Nature is one of the top science journals in the world, and we're going to use it quite a lot in this video. Now, Adam talks about Karl Popper, and he uses Peter Medawar's words, describing him as incomparably the greatest philosopher of science who has ever lived. He claims that Popper didn't think evolution was a testable theory because it was supposedly not falsifiable. Um, but Adam hasn't done his homework. Popper was a big supporter of Darwin, and although at one point he said it wasn't testable, he later changed his mind. And you can see this in this lecture, Natural Selection and the Emergence of Mind, where he defends Darwin and he even uses Darwin's theories to explain the origin of mind. And let's um, have a look at the quote that I think is relevant here. He says, I too belong among the culprits. Influenced by what these authorities say, I have in the past described a theory as almost tautological. And I've tried to explain how the theory of natural selection could be untestable. But yet he goes on to say, I still believe the natural selection works in this way as a research program. Nevertheless, I have changed my mind about the testability and the logical status of the theory of natural selection and I'm glad to have an opportunity to make a recantation. So, sorry Adam, Popper changed his mind on the status of evolution. And perhaps he did so because ev evolution is easily testable. The theory that humans and chimps evolved from a common ancestor makes a number of falsifiable predictions. So I'm gonna give just two examples here, although there are many more. Firstly, in evolutionary theory, the point of origin of a migrating population should have the highest genetic diversity. This was first discovered by Nikolai Vavilov, who was arrested by Stalin's forces for promoting modern evolutionary theories against the anti-Darwinian theories endorsed by the Soviet state. Now, Vavilov tried to protect genetic diversity by protecting the seeds of plants in what he calls centers of origins. Now, since evolution states humans and chimps evolved from a common ancestor in Africa, we should find that native Africans should have higher genetic diversity than any other group of modern humans. Now, if that's not confirmed, then evolution is in big trouble. But this is exactly what was found. Here you can see this article from the BBC. Note it says, the work revealed the continent to be the most genetically diverse place on Earth. And they're writing about this peer-reviewed article. And let's quote that peer-reviewed article. Note, they agree, Africa is the source of all modern humans. Now, another falsifiable prediction that evolution makes is that humans should have evidence of a fused chromosomes, as humans have one less pair of chromosomes when compared to chimps and other primates. So where did this chromosome go? Well, evolutionary theory implies that a previous primate ancestor's chromosomes fused together. Now, if we don't find this, then evolution has a big problem. Now, here's the graphic representing two chromosomes on the left. Now, these two genetic markers are shown. The red bands are the telomeres, and they're on the end of the chromosome, and the blue bands are the centromeres in the middle of the chromosome. Evolution predicts that we should find a chromosome that looks like the one on the right. It's a fused version of the one on the left, so there should be evidence of telomeres in the middle, where one would normally expect centromeres, and there'll be evidence of two centromeres. So the big question is, did scientists find it? Well, yes, they did, and it's human chromosome number two. Here we can see this confirmed in the paper in Nature, and let's quote it. Human chromosome two is unique to the human lineage in being the product of a head-to-head -head fusion of two intermediate-sized ancestral chromosomes. Here you'll see another paper, and then let's go to one more paper, the proceedings from the National Academy of Sciences. Let's quote them. We conclude a locus cloned in cosmos C81 and C29b is the relic of an ancient telomere-telomere fusion and marks the point at which two ancestral ape chromosomes fuse together to give rise to human chromosome two. So evolution does make testable predictions and they have been precisely confirmed. Can one say the same for the creationist hypothesis? 
Now next we get a quote from David Raup at the Fields Museum. But look at this next quote, it's from the same article Dean uses. The record of change pretty clearly demonstrates that evolution has occurred if we define evolution simply as change, but does not tell us how that change took place. So Raup is saying that the fossils do confirm evolution, but don't confirm which theory of evolution is correct. And even if Darwin had two theories of evolution, natural selection and sexual selection. Now, I don't have access to the original article, which is why I'm using the blog that you see now. But I do have this book, and written uh, in this book is a chapter by David Rao. And we can see he's very clear. The fossils say yes to evolution. Now, according to Dean, Mark Ridley's words, Mark Ridley's words further muddy the waters. What well, they do if you're Adam Dean and like taking quotes out of context. Let's look at the original quote and see if it really does muddy the waters. Now Adam quotes this, uh, this section, which he says, in any case, no real evolutionist, whether gradualist or punctuationist, uses the fossil record as ev evidence for evolution. But what Adam does not show us is the very next sentence. And what does it say? This does not mean the theory of evolution is unproven. He goes on to say, so just what is the evidence that species have evolved? There have traditionally been three kinds of evidence. And it is these, not the fossil evidence, that critics should be thinking about. The three arguments are from the observed evidence, evolution of species, from biogeography, and from the hierarchical structure of taxonomy. He's not saying that fossils don't support evolution, merely that we don't need fossils to demonstrate evolution. One only has to read the articles to see that. To say otherwise is either bad scholarship, or it's just dishonesty. Now next we're told Stephen Jay Gould invented his theory of punctuated equilibrium to account for the lack of fossils. But let's see what Gould really has to say, and let's quote him directly here. For that matter, what better transitional form could we expect to find than the oldest human, Australopithecus afarensis, with its ape-like palate, its human upright stance, and a cranial capacity larger than any apes of the same body size, but a full 1,000 cubic centimetres below ours. And he goes on to say, faced with the facts of evolution and the philosophical bankruptcy of their own position, creationists rely upon distortion and innuendo to buttress their rhetorical claims. And if I sound sharp or bitter, indeed I am, for I have become a target for these practices. And he goes on to say, since we proposed punctuated equilibria to explain trends, it is infuriating to be quoted again and again by creationists whether through design or stupidity, I do not know, as admitting that fossils rec the fossil record includes no transitional forms. Transitional forms are generally lacking at the species level, but they are abundant between larger groups. Or how about this? Creationist critics often charge that evolution cannot be tested and therefore cannot be viewed as a properly scientific subject at all. This claim is rhetorical nonsense. Or this one. Yet amidst all the turmoil, no biologist has been led to doubt the fact evolution occurred. We are to debate, debating how it occurred. Now the next section Dean tells us is uh, Barrow and Tipler. Notice Barrow and Tipler's book, The Anthropic Cosmological Principle, is written by two physicists. And the book is a popular paperback, not a peer-reviewed piece of research. Actual biologists have modelled the process Dean claims is unlikely and published them in real scientific journals. Right now you're looking at the one in Nature and note the claim, these findings show how complex functions can originate by random mutation and natural selection. And the same biologists don't just stop at calculations and simulations, they do the experiments. Here we can see Linsky's research published in Nature on long-term E. coli evolution. And look at these words. But several lines of evidence indicate that almost all of these mutations were beneficial. Now in the comments section to Adam's article, he claims, My point was that it is not an undeniable closed case, but rather remains much disputed amongst the very biological experts we'd expect to know best. Yet we've seen that every single biologist Adam mentions is a strong supporter of evolution, not one of them doubts it. Not one. And let's notice what Adam Dean says as well here. Either Osama rejects the inerrancy of the Quran, or he rejects the idea that man evolved from apes, or he has the bigger task of finding good reasons to interpret the text concerning creation in allegorical form. 
Now what Adam Dean is saying is that it's too much of a stretch to interpret the Quran as consistent with evolution. And so he defends his belief by pretending that these biologists he mentions cast doubt on evolution, but as we've seen, they don't. They passionately support it. Now the evidence for evolution is overwhelming, and just in case you think there is not a consensus on this, let's look at what the US National Academy of Sciences statement on human evolution says. Let's quote them. Studies in evolutionary biology have led to the conclusion that human beings arose from ancestral primates. The association was hotly debated in Darwin's day, but today there is no significant doubt about the close evolutionary relationships among all primates, including humans. And it goes on to say, let's get the next paragraph, the next paragraph says, scientists have unearthed thousands of fossil specimens representing members of the human family. A great number of these cannot be assigned to the modern human species Homo sapiens. Most of these specimens have been well dated, often by means of radiometric techniques. They reveal a well branched tree, part of which trace a general evolutionary sequence leading from ape like forms to modern humans. Now, in case you think it's just scientists from the States that have this view, a, statement, a statement signed by science academies from 68 nations endorsed evolution, including human evolution. And this includes countries like Iran, Pakistan, and Palestine. And we can see this image, you're going to see coming up in a second. These are the transitional fossils that Adam Dean says are lacking. And this is only a small selection. There are many, many more. The next image you're going to see is, is one of the most recent discoveries, Ardipithecus. And let's finish up with another quote from a paper in Nature. This is a paper that announced the draft sequence of the chimpanzee genome. And so it was a really big deal in the science of human origins. Let's look at what the paper said. More than a century ago, Darwin and Huxley posited that humans share a recent common ancestor with the African great apes. Modern molecular studies have spectacularly confirmed this prediction. Now these aren't my words, nor Richard Dawkins' words. This is the conclusion of an entire consortium of scientists that sequenced the human genome. Sorry, the chimp genome. But I think it's clear that the claims of Adam Dean and many other uh, creationists that you find online just don't stand up to scrutiny. Thanks very much for watching.